Teals and welcome to Coffee Chat, that show you forgot about. It's time to kick it old school. Woo! I'm sad. I went to VidCon, but that's not what this video is about. I have a different video coming out about VidCon. I didn't record super well, so it's really hard to piece it together, but it's coming. I want to talk about it because it was kind of life-changing. What I want to talk about today, I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling down and poopy, crumb, crumb, crumb. Feeling like a crumbly pie bake before it goes in the oven, before you can even eat it, so it's basically worthless. Like, it looks nice, the potential's there, but no one wants it yet. That kind of makes me tear up. See what I mean? I'm sad, and I don't really know why. Oh, we're done rendering. Hold on a second. I gotta send an email to a person. What was I talking about? I'm sad. With the recent police shootings and the recent police shootings, with everything that happened in Orlando, things feel really dire right now. And people are being very extreme when it comes to their points of views. And let's talk about dualistic thinking for a moment. Dualistic thinking is the idea that there is a right and a wrong. There's a black and a white. And you ascribe to one of those two sides and that's it, <laughs> done. And there is a place for dualistic thinking in our day to day. If you're driving down the road, if you have a destination, then you need to take a left or a right at a, at a fork. And dualistic thinking helps out when you're like, oh yes, left is the correct way to go to grandma's house. Perfect. Where dualistic thinking becomes problematic is issues like what's happened in Austin. Dualistic thinking becomes a problem when you talk about Black Lives Matter. And all of these things are very, very complex. And you are allowed to be multiple things. I know that there's memes circulating around this that talk about this idea. Oh my god, who's texting me? I can't, I can't right now. I'm trying to talk about how I'm sad. You're allowed to, and you're encouraged to feel multiple ways about one thing. Black Lives Matter, for instance. Black Lives Matter is not a hate group. It is not a group that is against cops, that is against anything that's not black. That's ridiculous. Black Lives Matter is a group that's shining a light on the injustices done specifically to black people. Not to say that there aren't injustices done to others, that is not the point. And it's actively trying to speak up about it so that more people listen and more people pay attention and maybe change will come from that. Within the Black Lives Matter group, you've got many different kinds of people who believe in many different ways of communicating. Be that through nonviolence, peaceful protests, and aggressive action. It is completely unfair to label that movement a hate group because of the actions of a few violent individuals. And if you're in Black Lives Matter, don't be anti-cop. That's insane. Police officers are people. The same way that you and I are people. We are flawed, they are flawed, there are great ones, there are bad ones. If you look at any job force, you've got outliers on both sides. You've got the incredible heroes who will risk their lives, who will run into bur burning buildings to save your dog. And you've got people who will pull over a black family and then shoot the driver. One person doesn't represent the whole. I hope that at some point, us as people can recognize that and stop labeling each other as one thing or another thing. Like, all women are this way, all men are this way, all black people, all white people, all Asians, all... That's dualistic thinking. That's saying this thing is this thing, period. Let's challenge ourselves to be better. Let's challenge ourselves to think outside of what's expected of us. Be more understanding of the community at large, the world at large, the way that we look at each other, not you and I, because I might not feel myself as particularly racist. I grew up in a community, I remember in high school, I tried to argue that racism didn't exist anymore. I believed that when I was 16 years old because I didn't see it. I didn't see it in my community. It was there. I see it now. I can look back and see the factions of people in my high school based on race, based on ethnicity, based on religion. And I can see the judgments that I held and that others held towards them and they to us. Um, I don't know what changed. I don't know why I see it now and I didn't then. I'm thinking about this a lot. And I think it's important to think about this a lot, but at the same time, maybe that is something that's contributing to this, just, the sadness I've been feeling recently. I'm afraid that there might be some chemical imbalance happening in my brain right now. 
Ah, uh, scratch it. Like, no, be okay, be okay. I don't know how serious these fears are. I haven't been sleeping very well recently, so it's very, very possible that this is all just because of that. Once I get back on like a normal sleep schedule, I'll be fine. We'll be fine, and we'll be drawn happy, diddly, not not Suze. What? When you do have a, I guess, normally functioning brain, that being that yeah, you don't have depression or a mental illness that's gonna prevent you from making these choices, you can wake up every morning and choose to look at things in a better way than not. I could be pissy all day because little things get on my nerves and little things get on my nerves constantly. Like right now, I might be out of focus and that really bothers me. And it bothers me that this little lens, which is so pretty, look at this glowing, this, my hair looks great. That lens doesn't have autofocus and it drives me up a wall that I could potentially put this memory card into my computer, set it all up to edit, and then everything be blurry. I could choose to be like really irritated by that, but instead I'm, I'm like, no, let that be. Let it, let it go down the river of life until you have to like find it later and fish it out of the river and then be like, does this look good or is it all poopy because someone shit in the river? That's a terrible analogy. Hold on a second, I gotta do this email thing again. I'm working right now, by the way. This is something that's nice about working from home, is that I can just work and record and then we have like a whole working system of art and business. I have been having a harder time being positive, just, just looking at things from a more positive point of view. And again, I don't know if that's just because of lack of sleep or because something's changing upstairs and I don't want something to be changing upstairs. That's spoopy scary. That's spoopy. I don't want to be spooked. Another thing, I've been very, very sensitive to other people's criticisms, specifically my boyfriend, who I love and is wonderful and sweet, and rarely ever has anything to say as far as criticism goes, um, which is why this is so unusual. We had to buy flights. I'm going to Michigan soon, and we had to buy flights to uh, do that, because he's also going, but we were going in different days, and he was getting on me about buying that plane ticket, because it had been weeks. I essentially bought the plane ticket four days before my actual flight, which is so dumb. Don't do that. It's very expensive if you do that. You're supposed to wait uh, at the least two weeks out or before that. So in this conversation about me needing to get this plane ticket, he told me that he doesn't know anybody who's better at putting off important things in lieu of dumb stuff. Mike sent me a bunch of flight information and was like, let's figure this thing out. And I said, real quick, are we good to buy that leather Game of Thrones book set? It's only $45, surprisingly. Guess what we did that day? Correct, we bought a book set and not any flights. So because of that conversation and his and my conversations about it, I'm finding out that I am a person who instead of focusing on the important things here and now, I distract myself with stuff that doesn't necessarily matter. And that gets me in hot water down the road because then I pay $500 for a plane ticket for something that should normally cost $250. And it extends into my professional life. Something that I'm really worried about is that I am gonna be known as somebody who will not get things done on time for whatever reason. Be it that I'm putting it off, be it that I'm too booked up to be able to accommodate the things that I say that I can accommodate. I just, I don't wanna be known as someone who doesn't follow through on their promises. That's the that's the overarching thing. Like if, if this was a therapy session right now and you were the therapist and I was just talking on my butthole like I am, I think that's the thesis that you and I would draw. I am afraid of letting people down, that I won't live up to the expectations that they have, that I have for me and my work. And instead of addressing that, it's easier to just buy a Game of Thrones box set. And that's sad. That's sad, and I'm sad. Everything's sad. Except for the day, because it's gorgeous outside. So the final thing that's potentially uh, contributing to the sadness, and I touched upon it before, are these external factors. I haven't been getting a lot of sleep. And the reason why I haven't been getting a lot of sleep is because I've had too much to do work-wise. I was essentially working two full-time jobs. So I would go to work in the morning, work until 7 p.m., come home, work from 7 p.m. until like 4 in the morning, go to bed, sleep four hours, and then start it all over again. At least once a week, sometimes two times a week, I had to pull all-nighters to get what I needed to get done, done. And that will contribute to someone being sad. The good news is I'm taking real strides to fix that. I quit my day job. I quit the job that I was going to from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
So now I am working exclusively, eh, yeah, now I'm working exclusively from home, which I think will allow for more of this, which is great. You want this? This is wonderful. I missed you. I love you. And I want a relationship to blossom. Shh, shh, shh. This is for you guys. I'll grab a bird. Did you miss the Berbers? They're doing well. The birds are good. The cat is good. Everything's good. Updates on that? Done. What was I saying? Yeah, I'm taking real, so I'm, yeah, I'm taking real strides to get better, to be happier. And I hope it works. If it doesn't, then I think I might start seeing a therapist. Which isn't super scary. I feel like I should say it's scary, but it's not. Uh, what's scary is the price point. I don't know how much a therapist costs. Before I do therapy, I should probably go to the dentist. But all of that would contribute to a happier life, you know? Taking care of yourself, making sure that you're healthy. Loving the big birds, loving these babies. Do you make me happy? You do make me happy. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. That's what I, what I want is to feel back to normal. Less sad all the time. I don't entirely know what's gonna change it, what's gonna make it better. But I've been thinking about it. I think that's clear enough. And yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for being here for my little coffee chat with a little bird and my little face. Oh, and I'm going to Michigan to see my family. And that always makes me feel better because that's where my heart is and that's where I started. And it, it's just, I'll miss you though. Okay, bye-bye. Oh wait, no, coffee bean yourself. Coffee bean yourself, but, uh, unless you're super sad, in which case, bean a better person than yourself. A happier person. Fake it, fake it till you're a bean. What am I saying? Are you still there? Yeah, you're still there.